Hey guys, and welcome to another Doom Builder tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a topic that I know more or less doesn't exist on YouTube and it's extremely difficult to find on forums because this is a subject that I myself spent ages and ages just searching through forums and videos to try and find a way of doing this. And that particular subject is creating cutscenes. So what we want to do is jump right into just creating a map and um, just creating a sector here. <coughs> now size and location don't matter too much in a tutorial but when you're designing a level it sort of will. So what we want to do is um, first of all just place a player start in. We'll start this off right here obviously because you want the player to be able to spawn in. Now I'm just going to face that towards the middle. Now the important parts here are using the right things so it's as simple as just sort of placing a thing in and as you saw I had selected already earlier um, set it to a moving camera under cameras and interpolation in the edit thing section and now what you want to do is set this camera's tag to 1 and the target thing tag to 2 now the target thing is obviously where it's going to travel to and um, what we shall do next is create the thing it's going to travel to change where it's facing so as it travels it sort of goes from facing here and goes and sort of slides across so it faces forwards. And we'll set this to an interpolation point and change this to 2, its tag, so that's where the camera's going to travel to, and the next point tag to 3. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the pitch as an example, because what the pitch does is the pitch sort of changes whether it faces up or down and how far. So if we set it to 45 here, it should face down by about 45 degrees. Now, as you'll see, there is now a line between the two things when you hover over them. And what we're just going to quickly do now is just place a couple more interpolation points, set this tag to 3, and this next point tag to 4. We'll set the pitch back to 4, to 4 it's a 0, so it sort of goes down and up. And then we'll set this to 4 and leave the pitch at 0 again and just change the way it's facing. Now one thing I'm quickly going to show you before I fully make the... Uh, hang on, what do I do here? Oh no, that's alright. Now what I'm going to show you here is, as you can see, when you move things up and down, so for example if I just move the character up, when I actually run the game, the character still spawns on the floor, it doesn't spawn like in the air and drop to the ground. The character stays on the floor even though I set the thing to being up in the air. Now with cameras this is entirely different. See with cameras, if I set the starting camera up a little bit and the rest of them a little bit higher oh, so it sort of slowly raises up um, I feel like I've done something wrong with this, yeah, it still shows the point. Basically what will happen when you watch the cutscene, when the cutscene plays, the camera will go from there, it will move upwards and st start sort of facing in the opposite direction. And now, the next thing we want to do is open the script editor. Now this is the most important part that makes it work. Now what we want to put at the top to open the script is hashtag include, and then in quotations, Z common <coughs> dot ACS. <coughs> now just hit the return key a couple times and enter your script number and the script type. In this case, I'm going to have it as open. You can have it as void, you can have it as enter. What this does is, as soon as the level opens, it will instantly run the script. Now, next thing you want to do is put a couple of braces and just enter once and if you don't put the braces in the script won't run it will come up with an error saying correct um, I think it's 
Decra data or something, something along those lines. Now the first thing you want to do, which is optional, is set the player property, so set player property, tab that, to... So here you see it says what is what, so here is who, so that's what player it is, so if you had four players and it was multiplayer, if I wanted it to be player four, the only player four that saw the cutscene, I'd set it to four, but in this case we're going to set it to one because it's a single player game and it is player one. Now set is one and that just sort of sets it as active, and next is which, and this is basically what sort of type um, of what property it's going to be. In this case it's going to be prop underscore totally if I can spell frozen yep I really can't spell today and just finish that off with a semicolon. Now what this does here is it freezes the character from moving about and it also freezes them from looking around and shooting their gun. If you just set this to prop underscore frozen or yeah prop underscore frozen you wouldn't be able to move but you'd still be able to look around and shoot your gun and waste ammo during the cutscene and a lot of the time you don't want characters to be able to do that but in some excep exceptions you might now the next step is to type change camera to and then you type in the camera's tag which in this case we've set to 1 as the first available tag then 0 and 0 so what this does is the TID, that's the ID of the camera, so the, um, well, the ID of the camera. Who, that would be the same as this, so if I wanted to set it to the characters, say if I wanted someone to view through another character's eyes, that would be that. And revert zero stops it from reverting after it's changed. Now this part is completely optional, I'm going to add the script fade to and what this does is makes it fade to black and then after you've done you'd run the fade to script again and sort of run it the opposite way so it fades to normal colour again so that it doesn't stay black. So what we want for this is um, 0 on red, 0 on green, 0 on blue and the fixed amount is going to be set to 1 and the fixed seconds will be in my case 3, so it takes 3 seconds to fade completely to black. We'll delay it by 100 ticks, which is just enough to make the effect sort of nice and noticeable, but not too long and boring before it changes back. So we'll run the fade to script again, and just 0, 0, 0. And in this case, this one's going to be 0 as well, and this is going to be 1.0. And don't forget the T. It's very important. <coughs> Next, what we want to do is um, delay it by 1 second, or 1 tick. So the person has not too long, but just enough time to register that the camera is sort of swapped to something else and then run the script thing activate that thing underscore activate um, and then just type in the ID of the object you want to activate so the camera's ID which is 1 and that will activate the camera and make it slide through the interpolation points now what you could do is just sort of put a hub message here or some print text like say print Say yes. Ah, oh, my days. I suck at typing today. This is a cutscene. Just we'll stop that and put that on the end, and we'll delay this by a hundred ticks again. And ah, oh, my days. I don't like the new bracket system since the latest few updates. And then what you do is run the change camera script again to zero 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 so zero 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 and 
if you wanted to do another fade to but that isn't completely necessary in fact no don't listen to me you could do another fade to here but there's not a lot of point now on this delay what you really want to do is sort of time in your head the amount of ticks the cutscene takes to run so um, I might set this to 200 not 2000 200 so that the cutscene has time to run and finish because one thing I had a problem with when I was making a cutscene is what would happen is it would reach the end of the cutscene and it would wait for too long and I'd change the amount of time and it wouldn't even be able to reach the end of the cutscene before changing the camera back but what you want to do after this is just what we'll do is we'll copy this for the set player property um, and you want to change this one here to a zero so this sort of reverses the totally frozen effect and you just leave the totally frozen um, script in there and that will just be that now another thing I'm going to add into this and also this isn't what I was going to add in but it might be a good idea to have this just also save um, what else what the other thing was I was going to add into this was just quickly throw in this script that allows you to skip the cutscene if the player so wanted to so in this case the script is going to be a void script and oh my days I need to get used to this new system of braces and brackets what you want to do is and this bit is optional you could do this as a print but we're going to do a hub message here to alert the player you don't even need to have this just this just alerts the player that they've skipped the cutscene so set font and then hub message again if I could spell and then in not in double brackets in single brackets just do a quick print command cutscene skipped and again I keep doing it don't I now you put a semicolon here just enter we're gonna use hard message uh, fade in out so it's 35 set the color of the hub message to white that's not how you spell white that is throw in a couple of variables here I actually don't honestly know what these variables are for I know some of them probably are how long they last but I haven't completely looked into what they're for yet I just know that they're there and I have a sort of idea of what way to use them and then we'll just close the bracket off and finish that with a colon and now what you want to do is run this player set property again and if you want again the auto save feature just throw that in if you want to have it in and again have the change camera to zero 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 and that is not completely it what this will do is what we want to do even is quickly again another optional script if you want to skip past all these script makings I will put annotations to skip this just to the end of the video if you already know how to do this which is a possibility I'm going to add integer script number and integer skip script now the next thing we want to do again braces I'm going to put in another hub message just close it off I didn't even type font there <laughs> or spell small right right next step is again hub message 
just type in the hub message you want. I'll rush through this because you know the hub message bit. And then again, just throw the numbers in. Now, you can have this on the same line. Set this to plane. 10, 1, 350. Now, if you don't know what other sort of types of numbers to just sort of throw in here feel free to just copy what I've used and now what we want to do here is use a while and this time we do want that second bracket on the end we also want a second one on the inside and we want to put here an exclamation mark an and exclamation mark and get the player's input this bit I just remembered isn't optional if you want to make a skip cutscene thing you will need this because if you don't have it then it won't be able to detect whether the player has pressed a uh, has pressed the use key to skip the scene and bt underscore use that's that and you'll want two lines here. Now that is the button right next to the left shift key if you didn't know beforehand. More brackets. We do want the double brackets on the end this time. Get player input again. Now we're going to put another bracket here. Zero. Input underscore old buttons and then again and pt underscore use now here we're going to put some more of the braces and just delay it by a single tick and then we want to do acs underscore terminate script one zero so that's map zero and then we want to execute an ACS script and that will be the previous script that we just made I believe yeah it is so that two three nope that's the one we just wrote two even now up here what we want to do is just quickly tab this out one more time and ACS execute and just quickly make it execute the second script I'm oh sorry, no, the third script and then write zero there one here and then the second script and finally just before the autosave ACS underscore terminate and then you will type script 3 map 0 and that is how to add the skipping system for the cutscene and also how to create a very very simple cutscene ah uh, yeah don't forget the semicolons and also anyway that was basically how to make you know the cutscene and how to make the cutscene skippable and basically I fixed this I missed out a zero on the end how stupid of me but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you could bear with me with all of my absolutely stupid and I know boring mistakes and I'll see you in the next video peace out